Good morning, St. Albans. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome to our service of morning prayer for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. For those who may be new to this faith community, we warmly welcome you to our church family, committed to honoring God through our worship, fellowship, and service to others. Today is the final day of our St. Albans Super Bowl food collection. My understanding is that the Kansas City grocery cart out in front of the church building has been overflowing, but it is not too late for a comeback from Tampa Bay fans filling their cart. We've already delivered hundreds of items um, uh, to line the shelves over at the Loaves and Fishes food pantry, which serves almost 3,000 people in our community this past year. So thank you for your generosity and thank you also to those who participated in our recent blanket drive. Together with Gethsemane Baptist Church, we collected 71 blankets that have been distributed to various places here in Davidson and beyond. We are coming up quickly on Ash Wednesday, February 17th. This year's service will be online in keeping with our current diocesan protocols. The service will broadcast at 8 a.m. in the morning on the church Facebook page and then will be available on Facebook and YouTube throughout the day um, for you to view anytime. We are distributing ashes ahead of time that have been blessed and then can be self-administered during the service as you participate at home. And these ashes will be either delivered if you live at the Pines or are one of our registered Sunday school families, or you can come pick them up um, at here at the church, 301 Caldwell Lane on the following days, February 13th from nine to 11 in the morning February 14th from 12 to 2 in the afternoon, and February 16th from 9.30 to noon. And I hope that you will participate with us in that very meaningful service, which begins our Lenten season. And uh, to prepare for Lent, we also uh, are, will be doing our annual Shrove Tuesday Pancake Supper virtually this year. We're going to get together on Zoom for just a little while at 6 p.m. And uh, we invite you to wear your Mardi Gras colors and show off your, your pancakes. And maybe we'll even play some games. It should be just a fun time of fellowship. And I'd love to see you there. We also, um, this afternoon, we, we will be having a, our START meeting. This is the um, St. Albans Anti-Racism Team, which began um, out of that renewed urgency of cries for racial justice and healing in our country. And so this afternoon from 4 to 5.30 on Zoom, that group will be meeting, and you can just let us know if you'd like to join, and we will give you the information to be able to do that. Hopefully also we'll see some of you at coffee hour at 11.30 following this service on Zoom. The link is in the newsletter. Now let us prepare for worship. Thou livest 
the true life of all. We blossom and flourish like leaves on the tree, then wither and perish, but not changeth From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations, and in every place incense shall be offered to my name, and a pure offering, for my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands, Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Now let us read together from Psalm 147. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God! How pleasant it is to honor him with praise! The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve humankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, 
and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name? Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He is understanding, is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 17. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heal me, man. 
dispel the memories of guilt and bring me peace with him. Fill me joy of Jesus, anxiety shall cease and have serenity be mine for Jesus brings me peace and have serenity be mine, for Jesus brings me peace. Gracious Lord, uphold thou me that I might uplift thee. Amen. Today's gospel lesson takes us to the town of Capernaum, a small fishing village near the Sea of Galilee. Jesus has just left the local synagogue and he heads across town to the home of some of his disciples. And there we're given a brief rundown of what happens over the course of the next 24 hours in the life of Jesus. First, there's a private demonstration of his compassion and healing, and that's followed by a big public health expo, and then finally, a spiritual retreat. So when Jesus shows up at Simon and Andrew's house, it's still the Sabbath, but a woman's fever is raging, and so Jesus acts with compassion and he heals her. And we often roll our eyes or maybe even laugh about how, of course, Simon's poor mother-in-law does not even get a chance to rest a bit before she's back to waiting on her company. Typical. Couldn't the disciples have warmed up some chicken soup or something and waited on her while she recuperated? There are probably some stereotypical gender dynamics at play here, but I think it's more than that. What we see in this woman's actions is, I believe, a response of gratitude that her health has been restored. And perhaps she quickly begins serving her house guests, partly out of a, a sense of obligation rooted in patriarchy, but she has also just had a one-on-one -on -one encounter with someone who showed her great compassion and I think her ready willingness to jump in and then begin caring for others is also rooted in wanting to share this same sort of compassion that she has received from Jesus. And so in this way, I think she actually functions as a model for Jesus' own disciples who are still very new at this. They've only just begun to learn about relational ministry. And here she is showing them what it looks like to selflessly serve others. Some have even suggested that this unnamed woman is actually the first deacon in the Bible, perhaps. But when the Sabbath day ends, a crowd begins to gather at this home where Jesus is staying. They're not really sure who he is, but they've heard about what he can do. And he continues his ministry of healing all sorts of illnesses and ridding people of their demons. Now, sometimes we don't know quite what to do with the healing stories in the Bible. They inspire and comfort us up to a point, but they can also challenge us because we don't usually experience healing as this sudden and complete thing that happens to us like some of the characters in the Bible who encounter Jesus and are healed. But even if healing looks different in our time, what I think that the biblical stories of healing give us is a profound understanding 
of Jesus's compassion. Here we see him ministering to people who come to him looking for healing, and he freely gives of his time and energy and abilities to care for those who are suffering. His compassion is real, and it is inseparable from who he is and what he came to do. And yet, there's an important detail here in Mark's gospel that we cannot overlook. Mark tells us that at this big impromptu public health expo where all sorts of people are being healed, says they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. So some people came and received the healing they sought, but apparently not everyone. And that's important, I think, because it reminds us that while Jesus is universal in his compassion and care for humanity, in practice, he could not address every instance of human need that he encountered. He had to make tough choices and sometimes had to set some limits on how much of himself he could give. And that brings us to what happened next. After a long evening of caring for people and healing their ailments, Jesus awakens early the next day to go tend to his own soul. He intentionally goes off to a quiet place where he can be alone to pray, to be with God. He gives and he gives and gives, but then at some point, he retreats. And this is a pattern we will see elsewhere in the Gospels. Jesus prioritizing his own spiritual needs and well-being, even though there are plenty more people who are in need of his care. After a while, the disciples come after him, expecting him to continue this ministry of healing the sick and suffering of Capernaum. There is more need. There's always more need. And Jesus could have stayed in that little fishing village and just fixed people's problems and healed their hurts indefinitely, and the needs would be never-ending. But Jesus instead chooses to trust that he has sown the seeds of compassion in Capernaum and that those seeds will bear fruit, even if he can't stick around to witness it. He tells the disciples that it's time to hit the road and spread the good news of God's kingdom in other places. For that is what I came to do, he says. He's clear in his call, and so he chooses to leave in order to go do what is his to do. Later in chapter 10 of Mark's gospel, Jesus will say, whoever wishes to be first among you must be servant of all, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And that is why, going back to what happened first in this story, I think Simon's mother-in-law is so important. Jesus and his disciples will travel from town to town proclaiming the good news of God's kingdom, but she will stay behind in Capernaum and serve. By her example, those who have been healed will see what it looks like to respond with gratitude to the compassionate healing they've experienced and then share that compassion with others. I believe this deacon does what a good deacon should, inspires others to stop underfunctioning and start serving others in Jesus' name, for that is our call. And I know that somebody out there today listening needs to hear that right now. So Jesus leaves Capernaum without finishing the healing ministry he began, but he leaves the town empowered to care for each other and serve one another. And in this way, the kingdom of heaven begins to take shape. And yet, the townspeople were probably left wrestling with some of the questions we often wrestle with now. Why do some people receive healing and others do not? Why is there so much need and sickness in the world? And how 
Can we care for everyone who needs it? These questions are very real, especially to us these days as we are in the midst of this global health crisis and we see disparities in access to both care and cure. We see some people recover from illness easily while others do not, and we can't always make sense of it. There are no easy answers to make us feel better about all of this, but what we do have is Jesus in scripture showing us again and again that healing happens in different ways for different people. Sometimes healing looks like a miraculous recovery from a fever, and sometimes it might look like people learning to care for one another and serve one another. And sometimes it might look like stepping away in order to tend to our own needs. Like we see with the woman who was healed, the ministry of compassion means serving others in gratitude for the grace that we've received. But like we see with Jesus, compassion requires a robust prayer life, time alone with God, and knowing when to entrust others with the work. At times, we might find ourselves surrounded by needs, by many, many people calling for our limited time and attention. But if we ignore the voice of God calling for our time and attention, we will not be any good to anyone. God calls us to the work of compassion, but over-functioning to the point of neglecting our own spiritual needs is not what God asks of us. And I know someone out there listening today needs to hear that. Jesus healed people because he came to usher in a new kingdom, one where human flourishing and health are prioritized. But Jesus also knew that he could not fix everything that was broken by himself. And so his primary ministry was to empower others for ministry, to empower us for ministry, this ministry of compassion. Sometimes that looks like tending to others, and sometimes that looks like tending to ourselves. And how are you doing with balancing that? To my underfunctioning friends, perhaps weighed down by the exhaustion of lockdown and isolation and fear and stress, how can you rouse yourself to get up and practice more compassion and more service in these times? Can you be creative in finding ways to reach out to others even in this time of distance, physical distance? And then to my over-functioning friends, can you press pause at least long enough to drink from God's well and fill up your spiritual reserves? Can you ask yourself the question, is this mine to do? And be honest about the answer. Things to ponder. Jesus has entrusted all of us with carrying out his ministry of compassion. And as we see here today in this story, that means compassion for one another in serving and compassion for ourselves in praying and nurturing our relationships with the Holy One who gives us life. Amen. Let us now join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time we hold before God's gaze, those who are in need of healing and grace and love. In our own community, together we pray for Amy, Anne, Bill, Bob, Caroline, Charlotte, Vern, Christopher, Courtney, Deanna, Earl, Florence, Gray, Hillary, Jean, Jim, Joe, Mason, Noah, Owen, Pat, Sandy, and Jenny. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for our adult spiritual formation small groups, including our Bible studies and our Journeys poetry group. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Michael and all angels and St. Peter's in Charlotte and Grace Mission in Clayton. 
In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Burundi. We pray for those serving our community as first responders, especially Matthew Shaw. We pray for those celebrating birthdays in our parish family this week. Emmeline Myers, Kelly Ross, Bennett Walker, Molly Harp, Denise Badgett, Sandy Lakin, Kim Mork, Leslie Urban, Elaine Carmen, Shannon O'Jean, Dalton Weehunt, Eleanor Gratz, Hampton Hager, Doreen Anding, Sally Harp. We pray for those celebrating anniversaries this week, especially Michael and Anna Marie Clem. We give great thanks for the birth of Daniel Miles O'Connell, born to Tiffany and Tim O'Connell. And we pray also for the departed, especially Faith. May her soul and all the souls of the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. At this time, I invite you to offer your own prayers of intercession or thanksgiving to God, either silently, aloud, or in the comment section. And now let us pray together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Almighty 
as crouch as by goodness red The peace of the Lord be always with you. 